some people might say you can't do any worse, but um, that's uh, something for us to decide, and uh, let's hope we make the right decision. In half a minute was that Anderson had been bowled by uh, Chris Old for four after New Zealand decided to bat. And we're joining it with the New Zealand score 24 for one wicket, and it's Old bowling to John Wright. Good shot. Almost unbelievable. Of all people, Roop, who I'd regard as one of the great slip fields when I've ever seen, and you can't have anything more straightforward than that. Exactly what Chris Old wanted. Too short to go for two. Straight into Roop's hands and straight out again. Howarth on 11 now. Willis the bowler. And that's a lovely straight drive. No need for anybody to run. Right off the middle of the bat. And that four to Howarth brings up the 54 New Zealand. And Bob Willis is going to switch around the wicket again for John Wright. Some method he adopted with the new ball at the start of play this morning. That's pushed easily through a mid-wicket for a single, a single, which will bring up the 50 partnership between Wright and Howarth. <laughs> it's almost impossible to believe that Graham Roop has put down two today. That one is much more difficult. The first one was uh, quite a simple chance of John Wright. This one going quite quickly off the outside edge of uh, Howard's bat. Roop having to take it round about shoulder height. It came out, and although Brearley moved away to his right very quickly, he couldn't get to it before it hit the ground. Four and house living a little dangerously. <laughs> Neat square drive there from Howarth and Wright running very fast. Turns what was certainly going to be two into three runs. Very good conditions here at the Oval today. Dry and sunny and the forecast is good. No thought of uh, any rain. Nice breeze blowing across the ground. Well, that's where he's very strong. in the covers. It's an orthodox field for Phil Edmonds. Slip and leg slip. Four on the offside, saving the single. Two on the on and a deep backward square. Yeah, that's a nice stroke. Bob Willis doing the chasing and that brings up the 100 for New Zealand. 151 minutes, we're into the 38th over now. Although they started slowly, it's been a very sensible, common sense acceleration. That's oh, just nicked away, past brilliant slip. So two runs there for John Wright, bringing him a 50. 50, which has taken him uh, two and three quarter hours and made out of a New Zealand score of 112 for one. Good performance this by this left-hander, weathered the early storm, the pace of Oldham Willis, and has grown in confidence as the day progresses. It's the New Zealand batting to come. Uh, John Parker, the man, not pronounced fit this morning. 
misses out on this test match. Richard Collins is the bowler omitted. So it's Willis back into the attack. And uh, Bob here, who started this morning with four slips on the gully, is now reduced to two slips. Cover point, mid-off, square leg, mid-wicket, and the mid-off. That's a lovely shot for four. Very pitch ball driven very firmly and very straight indeed by John Wright. That takes him on to 59, in fact, takes him to his best score in Test match cricket. And no problem at all there in taking 50, in fact, it'll move on to 51. So good hand here on his uh, home ground in this country at least for Jeff Howarth. A pretty good season since he joined the New Zealand party on their arrival here, averaging 46. He's kept that up today, going to 51 now in 166 minutes. So right on 62 as Willis moves in. And it's gone. Well, first ball, he comes on that new over and picks up the wicket of John Wright. The second wicket going down at 130. John Wright caught Radley, bowled Willis for an excellent 62. And Bruce had good to face his first ball in Test match cricket. One thirty-one for two now with uh, Edgar not off the mark. And playing back to one there where uh, he should not have been going forward. Brealey's crowding of the batsmen with these two close-in men. The type of thing often has the effect of uh, forcing the batsman back when he should be playing defensively forward. And he's gone. Now that's well bowled by Miller and well pressured by Brealey. Bruce Edgar, after minutes of indecision there, has got one that's turned just enough to find the outside edge, trying to play it around the onside, and Miller took quite a simple court and bowl. So that's 131 for three now. There'll be four runs. Very, very fine sweep there. A lovely shot. Right to the pitch of it, did everything right, and uh, not even David Gower is going to stop that. Both again to Howarth. He's found the gap this time. The unhappy knock of uh, playing a lot of good shots straight to fielders, but uh, puts that away very nicely between mid off and the bowler. Intended, looking to uh, drive that squarish in the offside. But uh, perfectly safe, there's no gully in there. He picks up two runs, the third man, and moves on to 86. 181, the score then, and these two came together at 131, and a ripple of applause for the 50 partnership. It's in the air, but uh, safe. And a good shot there from Howarth. So he moves uh, comfortably now into the 90s. Slow on, would you believe it? Slower ball, he's fallen for the trap, and Howarth goes with his score on 94. Brilliantly caught there by Phil Edmonds, who made it all look very easy. So uh, poor Jeff Howard thinking there was four runs there to take him on to 98. Slower ball, a bad ball in fact, a short one. And pulled away very firmly straight into Phil Edmonds' hands at square leg. So that was a fine effort, great effort there from uh, Jeff Howard. And obviously going to be so disappointed that he couldn't have made it three successive test centuries. But a fine innings for his side, he's helped to pull him through here to 191. And he's the fourth man out with his score on 94.
New Zealand lost their next six wickets for only 43 runs, uh, all out for 234, and that really was a, a disappointing effort.